In 2016, U.S. Embassy employees based in Havana, Cuba, became afflicted with a bizarre condition that experts are still unable to explain to this day. It started with one man who reported hearing a strange buzzing noise outside of his home. The noise seemed to follow him. Even when he turned his TV volume up, the noise persisted. Soon, other embassy employees began reporting similar symptoms. One person reported headaches and dizziness which affected their ability to work and live. The symptoms worsened with people complaining of memory loss, hearing problems, and fatigue. The noise was described as a metallic shriek or grinding metal. According to reports, around 40 U.S. and Canadian embassy personnel were affected by the strange noise, which led to the condition being called Havana Syndrome. People began to speculate that Cuba was using an acoustic weapon against the U.S. Embassy employees due to rising tensions at the time. Scientists also explored the possibility of Jamaican field crickets for being responsible for the affliction. Since the first reports of the Havana Syndrome, scientists have still not been able to get to the bottom of this bizarre situation. Lost Colony of Roanoke In 1587, 115 men, led by John White, arrived on Roanoke Island, a small island close to modern-day North Carolina. John White was appointed governor of the colony, and within months, the group began to flourish. The settlers had transformed the island with houses and businesses lining its coast, and John White felt confident that he could build other English outposts in what they called the New World. In late 1587, John White returned home to England via ship to collect more supplies for his budding civilization. Unfortunately, John did not anticipate the Spanish Armada invading the waters and quickly discovered that he was trapped in England. John sent letters to his new frontier, promising them he would return soon. Finally, in 1590, the Spanish Armada had been defeated, and John White was again safe to sail the Seven Seas. As he docked in Roanoke, he expected a large welcoming committee, but he found something even more bizarre. Every home, every business, and every shack was utterly deserted. There were no English colonists, and everyone had packed up and left hurriedly. The only clue to the lost colony was the word Croatoan that had been carved into a nearby post. John White searched high and low for his colony, but found no trace of them. They've now become known as the Lost Colony of Roanoke, and scientists have dedicated their lives to uncovering this mystery. One theory is that local Native American tribes took the colony. There's been no evidence to suggest that this is the case, though, and some experts believe that the colony may have tried to sail back to England. No evidence has ever been unearthed to point to what happened to the lost colony of Roanoke. Nazca Lines of Kazakhstan in 2007, amateur archaeologist Dimitri Day discovered something incredible. As he hovered his mouse over the grasslands in Kazakhstan, he saw markings in the ground akin to the infamous Nazca lines. Dimitri spent hours surveying the lines and noting their shapes. Dimitri didn't keep this discovery to himself and posted screenshots on the internet. Amateur archaeologists jumped on the project and began helping Dimitri figure out the mysterious origins of these lines. With the help of experts, they were able to figure out that the bizarre lines were over 8,000 years old. While these lines have been dated, experts still need to figure out who made them and why. The infamous Nazca lines in Peru were estimated to be about 1,500 years old, which means that these new lines predated the Nazca lines by hundreds of years. NASA offered their services and took brand new pictures of the 260 plus Kazakhstan lines, offering a new perspective. Unfortunately, experts are still none the wiser about who created these lines, how or why. Anthropologists determined that there were Stone Age tribes active in the area, but it's believed that their equipment and resources would not have been able to produce something of this magnitude. Experts still study the infamous lines to determine who made them and their purpose. Ozark Treasure Cave In the northwest corner of Arkansas lies the old Spanish treasure cave. This cave is the center of rumors and legends that have put the cave on the map. It's also home to an archaeological mystery experts believe they're close to solving. According to folklore in the area, the old Spanish treasure cave 
is home to an array of hidden treasures. The story goes that 350 years ago, Spanish conquistadors arrived in Arkansas to scope the area. These conquistadors were met by angry Native American tribes who wanted to defend their rightful land. As a result, the conquistadors were chased out of Arkansas by the Native Americans. But before they left, they headed to the old Spanish treasure cave to hide their most prized possessions. In the years since the conquistadors left, experts have uncovered a map with a rock that is said to lead to the buried treasure. Archaeologists and amateur explorers have yet to discover the buried treasure. However, they have uncovered helmets, armor, coins, and a bracelet that suggests the Spanish conquistadors were there. Nobody knows precisely what the hidden Ozark treasure looks like, but experts have yet to give up on finding it. Paracas Candelabra In Pisco Bay, Peru, lies an ancient mystery that even the most knowledgeable experts have yet to be able to solve. Carved deep into the side of the Paracas Peninsula is what's known as the Paracas Candelabra. It measures over 181 meters long, and according to experts, it's carved over half a meter into the soil. The giant drawing resembles a candelabra, hence its name, but experts still need to understand its origin and purpose. Experts excavated the area and discovered pieces of pottery that are believed to have been left behind by ancient tribes. These pottery pieces were carbon dated to around 200 BC, leading scientists to believe that the Paracas candelabra was constructed around the same time. Some people believe that the elaborate drawing was created as a tribute to Viracocha, the god of creation. Others think that it may have been a primitive signpost for the Paracas tribe. This drawing could be seen from miles away, especially out at sea, and would lead travelers to the Paracas coast and safely. Experts are still working to uncover the true mystery behind this gigantic carving. Donis Heraclea in the early 2000s, a group of divers off the coast of Alexandria in Egypt made a stunning discovery. As they delved into the vast waters below, they uncovered a statue of Happy, the ancient Egyptian god of fertility and the river. This discovery alone was enough to excite archaeologists. But as the divers continued exploring, they began to uncover more and more artifacts. Divers discovered pottery, coins, oil lamps, and a temple gathered at the site to marvel at the discoveries, and that was when they realized they discovered the lost city of Thonis Heracleion. Thonis Heracleion is akin to the infamous city of Alexandria, with experts determining that the city was a known port and trading hub. Those wishing to sell silver, gold, wine, oil, and even grain gathered in the ancient city. Its proximity to the ocean made it the perfect gateway to the rest of the world, and people flocked to buy wares. The city is believed to be around 2,700 years old, but the real mystery comes in its downfall. Experts are still trying to work out how the bustling trading hub of Thonis Heracleion ended up underwater. After all, its sister city, Alexandria, has survived centuries of trade and harsh weather. So what happened to Thonis Heracleion? Experts believe that a large earthquake and other natural disaster triggered floods in the area and this caused the city to sink under the weight of its grand temples and buildings. The jury is still out though, and experts are still working to uncover the mystery of Thonis Heraclea. Cambrian Explosion According to scientists, around 540 million years ago, fossil records began to change rapidly. Life on Earth was evolving at a rapid pace. Simple organisms quickly became more complex, with skeletons, eyes, and tissue. These organisms grew into animal species that we're familiar with now, but nobody knows how or why this happened. Evolution can take millions, even billions of years, but in just 13 to 25 million years, the diversity and complexity of organisms on Earth developed rapidly. Scientists believe that the increase in oxygen on Earth directly led organisms to adapt quicker. Others postulate that organisms finally assembled a genetic toolkit which allowed them to evolve much faster because they had unlocked specific genes. To this day, experts still study the fossil record and are still trying to figure out what caused the massive spurt in what's become known as the Cambrian period. Siberian Craters 
In 2014, a helicopter pilot discovered a gigantic crater close to the Bovenenkovo gas field in the Yamalo Nenets autonomous region in Russia. The crater measured over 20 meters wide and 52 meters deep. The pilot immediately informed the Earth Cryosphere Institute, which had been studying craters like this for decades. Scientists were dispatched to the area, and using satellite images, they were able to deduce that the crater had sprung up sometime in October or November of 2013. Now that scientists knew when the crater had popped up, they had to figure out why it had popped up. One explanation is that these craters started as gigantic pockets of methane gas hidden deep beneath the Russian permafrost. Over several decades, perhaps even centuries, the gas builds up until it reaches an endpoint. Once the pocket is packed with gas and the methane has nowhere else to go, it forces its way out of the pocket of land, throwing rocks and debris thousands of feet into the air. What's left is a crater that's 52 meters deep. Experts believe that around 7,000 other pockets of methane gas are trapped beneath the Russian tundra, due to burst any minute. Scientists are still trying to figure out where the methane gas is coming from. Some have speculated that the decay of natural material is the root cause. As years go on, many more craters will be formed under the high-pressure environment, and experts will continue to study this bizarre mystery. Mahogany Ship In Australia, the folk legend of the Mahogany Ship lives on even after 187 years. Legend has it that in 1836, a Portuguese or some Spanish ship sailed from Port Ferry to Warrnambool. During their treacherous journey, the captain lost control of the vessel and crashed into the water, sending the crew with it. Ever since then, people have been hunting for the wreckage of the infamous ship, and some believe it may hold the answers to a bizarre theory that could change Australia's history. Since 1836, people have been on the lookout for the mysterious Portuguese shipwreck. Rumors were rampant across Australia, with the ship often being described as being made from mahogany a common material used by the Portuguese and Spanish colonists. Many believe that the ship had wrecked somewhere in the sand dunes of Armstrong Bay. The local Victorian government even offered a $250,000 reward for anyone who could find the ship or prove its existence. Many experts have been critical of the mahogany ship story over the years, citing a complete lack of evidence to support its existence. For some, it exists merely as a folk legend told to tourists and residents. One author, Kenneth McIntyre, proposed that the mahogany ship was part of a comprehensive theory about the colonization and discovery of Australia. In his book, he wrote how he believed the Portuguese had been the first to Australia, beating the British. McIntyre received heavy criticism and backlash, and has been unable to produce solid evidence to support his theories. The story of the mahogany ship lives on, and to this day, people are still hoping to uncover it in the sands of Australia. Persian Princess In October of 2000, Ali Akbar stunned the world when he was discovered to have owned a Persian mummy. Ali claimed that he'd found the mummy close to the Pakistan-Afghanistan border, and that he'd gone to sell it on the black market. Ali was arrested and the mummy was seized and taken for testing. The initial examination showed that the remains were from around 600 BC, and the chest plate revealed that the remains belonged to the daughter of King Xerxes I. Experts were left bewildered by the condition and state of her remains. She had been prepared the same way ancient Egyptians would prepare their royalty, and it was rare for Persians to use this practice. Regardless, this discovery made waves in the archaeological world and forced historians to reconsider the timeline of events. However, just a few months after the mummy's discovery, further testing would send this case back into the spotlight. Experts had already considered this mummy's validity because Persians were not known to use this practice. Experts were now looking at the mummy in a different light and began to consider that this was a forgery. When forensic scientists stepped in to analyze the remains, they discovered something shocking. The woman's body was not from 600 BC, but more likely from 1996. She had suffered several catastrophic injuries and was then mummified and made to look like a Persian princess. Unfortunately, experts still have no idea who this woman is and who took her life. She's estimated to be between 21 and 25 years old, but experts have no leads to her identity. 
Samaya Hakiki. 24-year-old Samaya Hakiki was described as an intelligent and headstrong young woman. In 1999, she moved into an apartment in Hamden, Connecticut to be closer to the campus of her law school. Samaya had recently graduated from St. John's University in New York with a degree in paralegal studies, and she was looking forward to taking the next step in her education. On the weekend, Samaya would travel back to Queens, New York to be with her family and her boyfriend, Fahid Popal. On November 13, 1999, Samaya's family waited for her to walk through the front door of the family home, but sadly, she never arrived. Hours later, Samaya's parents reported her missing, and the search for her was officially on. Investigators discovered that Samaya was last seen on campus on November 12, 1999, and she was witnessed leaving the campus and has never been seen or heard from again. On November 14th, investigators discovered Samaya's abandoned black 1997 Volkswagen Jetta at the Grand Union Supermarket in Queens, New York, just a block from her boyfriend's home. Investigators found no signs of a struggle or indication of what could have happened to Samaya. Naturally, Fahid became the prime suspect, but despite a forensic sweep of his workplace and apartment, no sign of Samaya has ever been found. Fahid was later arrested and charged with Samaya's presumed demise, but investigators have never found Samaya's body. Fahid Papal maintains his innocence, but investigators believe that the two got into an argument after Samaya refused Fahid's marriage proposal. Samaya Hakiki, also known as Sammy, is described as an Asian female of Afghan descent with brown hair, brown hazel eyes, and 5'5 five five to 5'6 five and 128 pounds. Anyone with information is asked to contact the New York Police Department at 212-694-7781, quoting case number KNMP08882. Bob Perry Austin Jr. For almost 28 years, the mysterious disappearance of 19-year-old Bob Perry Austin Jr. has gone unsolved, and investigators are hoping to change that. Unfortunately, few details are available in Bob's case, which only adds to the mystery. According to reports, Bob was last seen on March 10, 1995, running away from the Oshner Hospital in Jefferson, Louisiana. The Charlie Project reports that witnesses saw Bob fleeing from the hospital and heading towards the levee. Investigators have never revealed why Bob was hospitalized or why he would want to run away from the hospital. Due to a lack of information, Bob's case has faded into obscurity, and investigators have gotten very few leads over the years. Bob Perry Austin Jr. is described as a black male with black hair, brown eyes, 5'10", and 155 pounds. Anyone with information is asked to contact Detective Derek Johnson of the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office at 504-363-5500 quoting case number C0878895. Sakato Clendenin Jr. 19-year-old Sakato Clendenin Jr. disappeared under tragic circumstances. On September 6, 2017, the Virgin Islands were hit by Hurricane Irma, causing irreparable damage to homes, businesses, and the community. According to Sakato's family, they were all hiding at their grandmother's house in the West Carrot Bay area of St. Thomas, waiting for the storm to pass. Naturally, everyone was terrified, but Sakato's behavior began to alarm his family. Reports indicate that Sakato was extremely emotionally distressed and began to freak out as the hurricane passed. His family did their best to console him, but his fear and anxiety were immeasurable. Sakato's family had been trying to get him mental health help and counseling before he disappeared. After hours of hiding in their homes and shelters, Virgin Island residents were given the all clear. Many emerged from their homes to assess the damage that Irma had done. Once the all clear was given, Sakato left his grandmother's home and ran off. He didn't tell his family where he was headed, and he's not been seen or heard from since. Due to his emotional stress, his family is highly concerned for his welfare. Sakato is described as a black male with black hair, brown eyes, and 5'6". 
Anyone with information is asked to contact the Virgin Islands Police Department at 340-774-2211. Stephanie Chase 25-year-old Stephanie Chase was a member of an indigenous tribe living in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Unfortunately, not much is known about Stephanie. The only information online pertains to her disappearance. According to NamUs, Stephanie last made contact with her mother on May 1, 1995. She was last known to be in Oklahoma City and has never made contact with her family since. Stephanie was reported missing days later, but the case has quickly grown cold. Investigators need more leads and clues to work with, but no information about Stephanie's home has ever been released, and it's difficult to know whether she disappeared from home or from the city. Stephanie is described as an indigenous female with brown hair, brown eyes, 4 foot 11, and 100 pounds. Anyone with information is asked to contact Detective Gary Damron of the Oklahoma City Police Department at 405-297-1129, quitting case number 0507235. Cookie Momodu 25-year-old Cookie Momodu was last seen in Tulsa, Oklahoma with sources reporting that Cookie disappeared sometime in the 1990s. The exact timeline and circumstances of her disappearance remain a mystery. She was reported missing after failing to contact her family, but there's been little movement in her case. Bizarrely, her NamUs profile has links to her siblings, Londa Phillips and Donald Ray Phillips and Paula Phillips, who also disappeared from Tulsa in 1991 and 1992. Paula Phillips disappeared on October 3rd of 1991, and when the Tulsa Police Department visited her brother Donald to interview him about her mysterious disappearance, investigators discovered that he too was missing. Their sister Londa would disappear under mysterious circumstances a year later. There are also two other disappearances that NamUs has linked to Cookie's case without further clarification. An anonymous source confirmed to journalists that Cookie is the sister of Donald Phillips. Cookie Mamodu is described as a black female with black hair, brown eyes, 5 foot 4 and 175 pounds. Anyone with information is asked to contact Detective Sergeant Joe Campbell of the Tulsa Police Department at 918-596-9143. Quoting case number 1991-065489. Bethany Ruby Bauer 38 year old Bethany Ruby Bauer was last seen on July 24, 2021, in Newton, Illinois. On that day, Bethany had been at a relative's home as she and her sisters rotated the care of said relative. Her sister, Barb Lingafelter, told WWTO that it wasn't uncommon for her sister to leave for a few days at a time, but this time was different. Bethany left without warning and didn't tell anyone where she could be found. On July 26th, two days after Bethany was last seen, her dog and her purse were found on the front porch of a relative's home. It was also discovered that Bethany had left behind her phone and keys. Investigators from the Newton and Jasper Police Departments joined the investigation, but minimal clues have come about. The clues and any leads that investigators did have fizzled into nothing. And now, Bethany's case is running cold. Bethany Ruby Bauer is described as a white female with brown hair, brown hazel eyes, 5 foot 8, and 160 to 170 pounds. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Newton Police Department at 618-783-8478, quoting case number 21N1150. Lanine Rogers the relationship between 29-year-old Lanine Rogers and her husband, Clinton R. Rogers, has always been rocky. By 1980, the two had separated for a while before coming back together at the tail end of the year. Lanine and Clinton's marriage had produced two children. By all accounts, Lanine was a devoted mother. On January 6, 1981, Lanine picked her children up from the babysitter and returned to her home in Hatfield Township, Pennsylvania. That evening, Clinton and Lanine got into an argument, one of many in their tumultuous relationship. According to Clinton, he went to bed at around 12.45 a.m., which was the last time he saw Lanine. When he woke up the following day, he was surprised that Lanine wasn't beside him in bed. 
He noticed her boots, jeans, and coat were missing from the home and assumed that she'd left to cool off. Days later, Clinton would report his wife missing to the Pennsylvania State Police when she failed to return home. Investigators immediately wanted to talk to Clinton as he was the last person to see Lanine. However, there was an issue. Both Lanine and Clinton were completely deaf and there was no sign language interpreter presented to aid in the interview. As a result, Clinton was never interviewed and investigators had to start from the ground up. On the evening that Lanine disappeared, a snowstorm had hit the area, making investigators question whether she'd really left home in such conditions. It was also discovered that Lanine had left behind her purse, hearing aids, glasses, car, and keys. Since Lanine's disappearance, Clinton has been arrested for various unrelated charges. Lanine's daughter, Allison, who was given up for adoption after her mother's disappearance, is now at the forefront of the hunt for justice for her mother and believes the deaf community holds the answers. Anyone with information is asked to contact Trooper Kevin Geibel of the Pennsylvania State Troopers at 814-332-6911, quoting case number E5201075. Misty Dawn Faulkner January 14, 2011 started as a typical day for 29-year-old Misty Dawn Faulkner of Oklahoma. After finishing up a long work day, Misty headed to the Walmart in Jay to grab some groceries. Several witnesses recalled seeing Misty at the Walmart and said that she was in good spirits. At around 7.30 p.m., Misty pulled her red 1996 Ford Explorer into the driveway of the home that she shared with her grandparents, but she didn't immediately head inside. According to her grandfather, he heard her car pull into the driveway and went to the window. When he saw that it was Misty, he waved to her and saw that she was on the phone with somebody. Her grandparents waited for over an hour, but Misty never came to the house. When the hour was up, her grandparents wandered outside to make sure that she was okay, and that's when they realized she was missing. Her car was still in the driveway along with her phone, wallet, and the food that she had bought from Walmart. Since then, there's been no sign of Misty and her grandparents are desperate for answers. Investigators have never revealed who Misty was on the phone with that afternoon and believe that she may have met with foul play. Misty Dawn Faulkner is described as a white female with brown hair, hazel eyes, 5 foot 2 and 150 pounds. She was last seen wearing a black Stephen Barry's sweatshirt, a black sweater, blue jeans and brown boots. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Delaware County Sheriff's Office at 918-253-2700, quoting case number 2011-0084. Robert Heisenberger On April 8, 2004, 38-year-old Robert Heisenberger and a group of friends headed down to Lake Mead, located in the Lake Mead National Recreation Area. The group planned to hike and relax, but their trip would take a turn for the worst. That afternoon, the group of friends witnessed Robert walking away from Lake Mead near North Shore Drive in Mile Marker 8 in Las Vegas. It's unknown why Robert was heading away from Lake Mead or where he was going, but he's never been seen or heard from again. When Robert failed to rejoin the group, they contacted the Lake Mead National Park Service who began a wide-scale search. Tracking dogs and a helicopter team were brought in to aid in the investigation and the only clue left behind was Robert's 1999 bronze Mazda B2500 truck. Inside the locked truck, investigators found Robert's wallet, watch, and shoes. Robert's friends told investigators that he'd left without any food or water and that they were extremely concerned for his safety. Since 2004, there have been no leads and Robert's case is now classed as cold. Robert Heisenberger is described as a white male with brown hair, brown eyes, 5 foot 11 to 6 foot, and 145 to 155 pounds. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Lake Mead National Park Service at 702-293-8990, quoting case number 2004-0446. Jeffrey Lee Stinnett In 1977, Jeffrey Lee Stinnett's sister noticed a change in him. During the Christmas holidays, Jeffrey claimed that an angel had driven him over to the family's home and he began to give away his possessions. 
In early 1978, 21-year-old Jeffrey quit his job and became reclusive. According to official reports, his mother made the last known contact with Jeffrey on January 15, 1978. After that, the whereabouts and fate of Jeffrey remain unknown. Jeffrey wasn't reported missing until April 19, 1978. The report was filed by his roommate, who lived with Jeffrey close to the University of Michigan. This roommate told the Ann Arbor Police Department that they hadn't seen Jeffrey in at least seven days. The exact timeline of Jeffrey's disappearance remains a mystery to investigators. And now, 45 years later, his parents are praying for answers. Investigators discovered that Jeffrey had left everything behind in his apartment when he disappeared. Jeffrey Lee Stinnett is described as a white male with brown hair, blue eyes, 5'10 to 5'11, and 140 to 160 pounds. Anyone with information is asked to contact Detective Sergeant Earl Fox of the Ann Arbor Police Department at 734-794-6920, quoting case number 7814040, or FBI VICAP at 800-634-4097. In 1850, a vicious storm rocked the Isle of Orkney in Scotland. As the winds and waves swept across the coast, many found that their homes and businesses had been destroyed. Unfortunately, many people lost their lives due to the dangerous conditions. But when the storm settled down, the residents of Orkney uncovered something incredible. In the wake of destruction lay several homes near the Bay of Oscale. The houses had no roofs and featured a fireplace. Archaeologists were keen to excavate the area, but there were concerns that they might damage the ruins further. Experts were also concerned about the rough weather of the Scottish Isles degrading the structures, so they put in measures to ensure its integrity. Many decades later, archaeologists returned to the site, this time armed with state-of-the-art technologies and new knowledge. Before the 1970s, it was believed that the homes came from the Iron Age, However, carbon dating proved this theory wrong. Carbon dating placed the structures around 3180 BC in the Neolithic era. There were many things to discover at the site now known as Scara Bray. Dozens of homes and structures lined the coast, and experts were given a great insight into how our ancestors lived. One thing troubled archaeologists, though. Why was Scara Bray abandoned? Evidence left behind by the residents suggested that they'd left in a hurry, possibly due to some natural disaster. The artifacts had been incredibly well preserved, but experts are still none the wiser about why Scara Bray was abandoned entirely until it was discovered in 1850. Machu Picchu In 1911, American archaeologist Hiram Bingham and his team set off to find the lost city of Vilcabamba in Peru. Whilst on their journey, the group would uncover another hidden marvel that's left experts baffled for decades. Whilst Bingham and his team didn't find what they were looking for, they discovered something even more incredible. Hidden deep in Peru's lush forests and mountains, they found ruins of an old city known as Machu Picchu. Archaeologists uncovered hundreds of buildings, businesses, homes, and temples on the mountain, all carefully curated using stone. Experts believe that the town was made sometime in the 15th and 16th centuries, with a more specific date of 1450. Just 100 years after the city was put together, it was abandoned without reason. Experts are still trying to figure out what led to the demise of the Incas who possibly lived here. Another question that's bothered scientists is who actually lived here? No records mention Machu Picchu or its inhabitants and the purpose of the city remains a mystery. Some believe that the Incas lived here and used it to grow crops and experiment. Others think it was likely a place of religious or spiritual significance and may have been a place for Inca royalty to relax away from the hustle and bustle of the cities. Machu Picchu is believed to have been capable of housing at least 750 people, but so far only a tiny percentage of their skeletons have been discovered. Each year, archaeologists flock to Machu Picchu, hoping to unlock its hidden mysteries. Qin Shi Huang 
In March of 1974, farmers in China grabbed their shovels and prepared for a long day ahead. The farmers had headed out into the fields to dig wells, but instead of finding running water, they would uncover one of China's biggest mysteries. As the farmers swung their tools, they hit something solid. After many hours of digging, they encountered many terracotta warriors. They had all been carefully sculpted, each being different from the last. The farmers immediately reported their findings to the authorities, and archaeologists would unearth around 2,000 terracotta warriors in the coming years. Experts determined that the farmers had come upon the final resting place of China's first emperor, Qin Shi Huang. Huang lived from 259 BC to 210 BC, and served as the first emperor of a united China. This find was significant, and these terracotta warriors had been crafted to protect Huang in the afterlife, as they had in the real world. Archaeologists also uncovered tools, coins, bronze, yards of silk and linen, leather and other items deemed necessary to Huang. While his terracotta army has been unearthed and placed in museums worldwide, the actual tomb of Qin Shi Huang has never been found. Its exact location within the grand underground structure remains a complete mystery. Since 1974, efforts have been made to discover his tomb, but the Chinese government believes that Qin Shi Huang's final resting place should remain a mystery so that he can rest. Chichen Itza The ancient Mayan city of Chichen Itza sits 120 miles from the city of Cancun in Mexico. The city is significant to the Mayan civilization that once ruled and lived in Mexico. As archaeologists continue to excavate the site, more and more mysteries are being unearthed. But one question has plagued experts for decades. Why was the city of Chichen Itza abandoned by its people? Between 750 AD and 120 AD, the Mayans lived in the grand city of Chichen Itza. Archaeologists have discovered temples, pyramids, and large stone buildings in the city that held great significance to their society. Archaeologists are still stunned by the pyramids, and it's a mystery how these were built without modern tools. The temple in the city was found to have 365 steps, corresponding with the days of the year. Archaeologists and explorers also discovered that during the spring and autumn equinox, a shadow could be seen on the pyramid in the shape of a snake. The Mayans were incredibly advanced in space and astronomy, but who or what caused this great city's downfall? Some believe the Spanish colonists are to blame for the decline of the city. Other experts believe that the capture of Chichen Itza happened well before the Spanish arrived in Mexico. Biologists have also discovered that the soil in Chichen Itza was not arable, possibly leading the residents to abandon their city. Archaeologists are still at the site, trying to determine the exact downfall of Chichen Itza. Atlantis In 360 BC, the great philosopher Plato wrote about a mysterious island off the coast of Gibraltar called Atlantis. Plato described how this once grand island had now sunk into the ocean's depths. To this day, people are still searching for this mysterious island, and many even doubt that it exists. Plato described Atlantis as an island made by half-humans and half-gods in his writings. Atlantis was said to be the perfect society where everyone lived in peace and harmony. Their technologies were advanced, and the people had access to gold and silver. Many believed Plato's version of events and went straight to Gibraltar to look for this mysterious island. In the years since Plato published his works, people have claimed Atlantis to be in many different locations across the continents. Some believe it's hiding off the coast of North America, while others stick to Plato's theory that it lies in the Mediterranean. Experts are still trying to discern the exact location of Atlantis and what caused it to sink. Those who believe that the mysterious island lies close to North America speculate that it may have been swallowed up by the Bermuda Triangle thousands of years ago. There are many critics of Plato's works, with many believing that Plato himself fabricated the lost city of Atlantis. Until archaeological evidence is found, the city of Atlantis remains a myth. The Ark of the Covenant 
The Ark of the Covenant is one of the most significant biblical artifacts to ever exist. The Ark of the Covenant is a golden chest with two tablets holding the Ten Commandments. These tablets were given to Moses by God, and he was tasked with spreading the word of God and ensuring that his followers lived up to these rules. As Christianity spread across Europe and other continents, more and more people wanted to see the tablets with their own eyes. But there was just one problem. After being given the tablets from God, Moses was said to have placed them in the gold-encrusted box and stored them in the first temple of Jerusalem. In 587 BC, the temple was destroyed, and many feared that the Ark of the Covenant had also been destroyed. Some experts believe that the Ark of the Covenant was magically saved and moved to another location, but this place is yet to be found. In 2021, theologists and linguists translated Hebrew text saying that the Ark of the Covenant and other religious items will not be revealed until the day of the second coming of the Messiah. Experts are still desperately trying to track these tablets down, and their discovery would be a significant breakthrough for religious experts everywhere. Hobbit Fossils In 2003, archaeologists working on the Indonesian island of Flores made a startling discovery. As they were digging, they came across a skeleton, but something about this skeleton was different. Experts determined that it belonged to an adult female who stood at just 3 foot 5. According to reports, the skeleton was complete with arms, legs, and the pelvis intact. Scientists had never seen such a specimen, and after much deliberation and work, they declared that they discovered a new ancient human. Scientists called it the Hobbit due to its short stature. This wouldn't be the only fossil to be discovered, and years later, partial remains of other Hobbit people were uncovered on the island. Anthropologists analyzed the skulls and determined that they likely had a small, flat, sloping forehead and a short, flat face. Experts are still studying the mystifying Hobbit fossils and aren't quite sure where they fit in the human family tree. They were believed to have lived 95,000 years ago, all the way up to 12,000 years ago, but other estimates put them as far back as 700,000 years ago. Tools and other artifacts that are around 118,000 years old have been recovered, adding credence to the theory. Anthropologists are still working to determine precisely where they fit in and how long they roamed the Earth. Superhenge Stonehenge is one of England's biggest attractions, but did you know that just two miles away lies another mysterious monument? In 2015, archaeologists and anthropologists discovered a gigantic stone monument buried beneath the grassy hills close to the Durrington Walls. Scientists uncovered over 90 stones that measured 15 feet high and were spaced over 130 feet of ground. Scientists discovered that the stones were around 4,500 years old and perplexed about how they were dragged into position. This site is believed to have served as an arena or meeting place for locals. Stonehenge often overshadows Superhenge, and little progress has been made in the determination of their origin and their purpose. London Hammer In June of 1936, Max Hahn and his wife Emma took a stroll along Red Creek near London, Texas. It was a warm, breezy day, and the two took full advantage of the excellent weather. As they were walking down past the creek, they saw something bizarre. When they knelt down to inspect it, they found a piece of wood stuck in a rock. Naturally, their curiosity got the better of them, and they picked the rock up and took it home. For over 10 years, the rock sat undisturbed in the Han household. That was until the couple's son broke the rock open and kickstarted one of archaeology's greatest mysteries. Emma and Max were shocked to find an iron hammer jammed into the rock they discovered all those years ago. The two would present the hammer to archaeologists and 40 years later, Carl Boff bought the item that has become known as the London Hammer. Carl commissioned a report into the hammer and in 1985, it was stated that the rock that the London Hammer was stuck in was at least 400 to 500 million years old. Nobody knows how long the modern looking hammer ended up encased in the rock. According to reports, the hammer had not rusted since it was discovered, and modern anthropologists are baffled by this discovery. No two anthropologists can agree about the London Hammer, 
and it remains one of archaeology's greatest mysteries. Baghdad Battery The mystery of the Baghdad Battery has baffled experts for over 85 years. In 1938, Willem Koenig made the discovery of a lifetime when he uncovered a clay jar close to the center of Baghdad. To untrained eyes, this clay jar looked like just another artifact that would be placed in a museum. But Willem was more interested in its contents. Most jugs like this would have been used for water or wine, but this one was different. Inside the clay jug, Willem found an iron rod inside a copper cylinder. The jug and cylinder were estimated to be around 2,000 years old. What's more is that the iron rod and copper cylinder resembled early batteries. Had Willem just stumbled across a 2,000-year-old battery? Humans have been using batteries for decades, but this discovery may change the course of our developmental history forever. Scientists put the iron and copper cores to the test, and they were able to get tiny sparks of electricity, 1.5 to 2 volts. Many have discredited Willem's theories and believe that the jug and battery may be much younger than first anticipated. Unfortunately, the jug was stolen in 2003, and scientists have been unable to conduct further research. What happens in a black hole? When a star reaches the end of its lifespan, it can collapse in on itself and trigger what's known as a supernova. From a supernova, a black hole can be made, and this black hole can hold 20 more times mass than the sun and has a gravitational pull so strong that light cannot get out. Black holes have fascinated scientists for decades, and NASA regularly funds projects, but one question has always bothered scientists. What happens in a black hole? In 2015, the esteemed Dr. Stephen Hawking and his associates wrote a paper exploring what happens inside of a black hole. Dr. Hawking hypothesized that inside of holding everything inside of the black hole itself, the formation is stored outside. Black holes are challenging to spot and access, and this new revelation of information being outside of the black hole gives scientists renewed hope. The 2015 paper would be Dr. Hawking's penultimate paper before he passed away. Scientists are still no closer to discovering what happens inside a black hole. But Dr. Hawking's work may bring us one step closer. Milky Sea In January of 1864, Captain Raphael Sims and the crew of the CSS Alabama encountered something so bizarre that even modern scientists cannot explain it. Sims recalled, at about 8 p.m., there being no moon, but the clear sky and the stars shining brightly, we suddenly passed from the deep blue water in which we'd been sailing into a patch of water so white that it startled me. The ship had entered the Horn of Africa when they were confronted by the Milky Sea. Many more ships have encountered the Milky Sea in the years since the CSS Alabama sailed, but scientists are still no closer to uncovering the truth. Satellite images have been taken of the sea for the first time, and scientists believe that a bioluminescent bacteria called Mareal is responsible for the phenomenon. Stephen Miller of the Colorado State University told the BBC, quote, We haven't solved the mystery of the Milky Seas. We have been able to detect them, but there's no concrete evidence of how they form or why they form. We just need to find a lot more out about it. Blobus purpolis in 2016, researchers from the Ocean Exploration Trust launched the EV Nautilus, a research vessel into the ocean just off the coast of Southern California. The team hoped to identify new species and get a bigger picture of the ocean floor. Instead, what they discovered has become one of science's most baffling mysteries. While sweeping the ocean floor, the crew operating the Nautilus came across this, Blobus purpolis. According to reports, the blobus is a bright, glowing organism with two distinct lobes. Scientists were baffled by this discovery and went in for a closer look. So far, it's believed that the blobus is a sea slug, but scientists are unsure. Few discoveries have been similar to the blobus purpolis, and its origins remain a mystery. Dark Energy At least 68% of the universe is made up of so-called dark energy. 27% is made up of dark matter, and the rest is what NASA calls normal matter. 
even the brightest minds in physics have been unable to decode precisely what dark matter is and where it came from. In 1917, Albert Einstein realized that space was not made from nothing and that there had to be some abundant energy out there. Since then, researchers have been desperately trying to isolate dark energy and dark matter with little success. Scientists have figured out that as space expands, so does the amount of dark energy. On their website, NASA stated, quote, another explanation for dark energy is that it's some kind of new kind of dynamical energy fluid or field, something that fills all of the space, but something whose effect on the expansion of the universe is quite the opposite of that of matter and normal energy. Before the Big Bang According to the popular theory, 13.8 billion years ago, the universe imploded in on itself and formed what is known as the Big Bang. This bang accelerated particles and atoms through space, causing space itself to grow 80 times in a fraction of a second. One minute there was nothing, the next there were planets. But what happened before the Big Bang that created life as we know it? We know that a single event triggered the start of the universe, but was that the start of time? Many scientists are now asking what came before the supposed Big Bang and whether there was quantifiable activity. Some experts have argued that if we go back 13.8 billion years to just before the Big Bang, that time itself will stop and cease to be. Experts cannot agree on what came before our universe as we know it, with Lee Smolin of the Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics telling new scientist, quote, it's a cute idea, but there's not much evidence for it. We can only hope to explain why our universe is the way it is, if there was something before the Big Bang. Foreign Accent Syndrome In 2009, 56-year-old Karen Butler prepared herself for dental surgery. She'd been considering the surgery for some time, and after consulting with her dentist about the pros and cons, she finally underwent the procedure. When she awoke, everything seemed normal. That was until she went to speak. Karen's Oregon accent had been replaced with a British one. Karen and her family were perplexed. None of them were British, and they had no idea how she could have picked it up. After a week of having a strange British accent, Karen consulted a doctor who diagnosed her with foreign accent syndrome. In 2019, there were confirmed to be just 112 cases of foreign accent syndrome, making it incredibly rare. Doctors who have studied the disorder found several risk factors that could lead to a person developing FAS, such as strokes, tumors, brain hemorrhages, and head injuries. Scientists and doctors are still trying to work out exactly how FAS is triggered within the brain, and many experts have pointed to damage to Broca's area in the brain. There's no known cure, and those afflicted with foreign accent syndrome often have to undergo intensive speech therapy. There's no guarantee that their normal accent will return, and they might be stuck like that forever. Morning Glory Clouds the tiny Australian town of Burketown has been put on the map by a bizarre phenomenon that appears every year. In the spring, between September and October, morning glory clouds roll over the small town, attracting hundreds of tourists. These large tubular clouds fill the sky and go for as long as the eye can see. Scientists have been called to the area to investigate, but so far, no evidence for these clouds has been found. What's even more bizarre is that Burketown is the only documented place where morning glory clouds appear every year. One theory behind the clouds is that they're created when the humidity is just right, allowing the warmer air to mix with the dry, cool air before evaporating at the back, creating long tubes of clouds. Twilight Zone Our oceans are very poorly understood, and scientists who have dedicated their entire careers to studying our waters are still discovering new things every day. From 200 meters to 1,000 meters deep lays the so-called twilight zone. While scientists have always been interested in this part of the ocean, interest in the region has spiked over the last few years. Nobody knows who or what is lurking down in the twilight zone, and so far, scientists have found that there may be at least 1,000 trillion bristlemouth fish living there. There are a plethora of new species of fish and crustaceans, but scientists have struggled to survey the area. The main concern is disturbing the animals with clunky underwater cameras and robots. 
Advances in technology have made it possible for scientists to get a brief glimpse into the Twilight Zone, but for now, its inhabitants remain a mystery. Upsweep Sound in 1991, the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory began surveying the waters of the Pacific. Initially, this was a response to the Soviets, as it was feared that they were sending submarines and other ships. This equipment was touted as the first line of defense as operators would be able to hear enemies approaching. Instead of finding Soviet ships, the lab discovered something much eerier. During the autumn and springtime, operators began hearing a bizarre upsweep sound. Reports described it as, quote, consisting of a long train of narrow band upsweeping sounds of several seconds. Since 1991, the bands of upsweep sound have continued to roll in, and scientists are still unsure of their cause. One theory is that they're the result of seismic activity underwater, but this has never been confirmed. Fatal Familial Insomnia Having a restless night's sleep can wreak havoc on your day, and in the long term, it can have serious health effects. Those with insomnia can experience slowed cognitive function, fatigue, and other life-altering side effects. Most of us will undergo a period in our lives where we find it hard to sleep, whether that's due to stress, environmental factors, or health factors. But imagine never being able to sleep again. Unfortunately, that's the reality for someone with fatal familial insomnia. Experts don't understand fatal familial insomnia well, and all we know is that it's a genetic condition that can affect whole families. The symptoms start mild and get progressively worse. Those affected will go from having a poor night's sleep to no sleep, which can prove fatal. Other side effects can include high blood pressure, double vision, weight loss, hallucinations, and difficulty swallowing. There are currently only 100 recorded cases of FFI around the world and most of those affected with the disease will pass away within three years of diagnosis. Scientists recently discovered that a mutation to the PRNP gene causes FFI, but no treatment or cure has been found. Janet Renee Field 49-year-old Janet Renee Field was last seen leaving her Hickory Hill Drive home in Scottsville, Virginia on July 2, 2014. That afternoon, Janet and her husband, Lewis, had gotten into what was described as a minor argument. In response, Janet hopped into her burgundy 2010 Subaru Forester and drove away to clear her head. Unfortunately, Janet never returned, and she was reported as missing the following day. Investigators discovered that in the days before Janet's disappearance, she had behaved normally, she went about her daily routines, contacted her parents, and even went shopping with Lewis. Janet's disappearance was noted to be out of character for her, and while she was a very private person, she was very close with her parents and family. On July 4, 2014, investigators found Janet's abandoned car at the Zion Crossroads Park and Ride in Virginia, around 20 miles from her Hickory Hill Drive home. Janet had left her car keys, phone, and purse behind in the car, and there was no sign of what could have happened to her. Janet's case has now run cold, and investigators have very few leads to work with. Janet Renee Field is described as a white female with brown blonde hair, blue eyes, 5'7", and 130 to 160 pounds. Anyone with information is asked to contact the sheriff's office at 434-589-8211. Exploding Head Syndrome Nothing is better than laying your head on a comfortable pillow after a long and hectic day. Getting to sleep can be almost impossible for those suffering from exploding head syndrome, though. Just as they're about to close their eyes and drift off into dreamland, sufferers hear a loud bang or a clash of cymbals. Even when the room is entirely silent, sufferers will still hear loud bangs that prevent them from getting a good night's rest. Researchers have discovered that women are more likely to get the disorder than men, and that sleep disorders, a mental health issue, stress, or a seizure in the temporal lobe may cause it. There's no cure, and scientists are still unsure about the exact cause of exploding head syndrome. Paul Seigler 55-year-old Paul Seigler was last seen at a phone booth at 15 Hall Street in Concord, New Hampshire on November 15, 1996. In the lead-up to his disappearance, 
Paul exhibited bizarre behavior, and his family believed he was suffering from paranoid schizophrenia. Paul was regarded as a well-accomplished man, having obtained a degree in physics from the University of New Hampshire and an MBA from Harvard. Paul was also involved in a NASA program in 1976, and when he returned home, his bizarre behavior began. By 1996, Paul was homeless and living in a tent in the woods near Merrimack River, and it appears that his condition had deteriorated. His son, Brandon, was the last one to see him on November 15th, and he reported that it looked like his father was not taking his medication. Paul was reported missing in 1997, and a search of his tent showed that he'd left behind his cherished Bible. Since 1996, there's been no word from Paul, and his family is extremely concerned for his welfare. Paul Seigler is described as a white male with graying, partially gray hair, brown eyes, 5'7 to 5'9, and 160 to 180 pounds. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Concord Police Department at 603-225-8600, quoting case number 069467-OF. The Lost City of Honduras and the Monkey God In 2013, researchers in Honduras pioneered an expedition that led them deep into the La Mosquisha forest. Using light detecting and ranging technologies, they were able to unearth a mysterious hidden city. The city is considered the White City, a fabled lost city. Researchers discovered artifacts that displayed this tribe's devotion to a monkey god, and these artifacts were dated from 1000 to 1400 AD. Researchers are still trying to figure out whether they really had stumbled across a lost city in the thick brush of the Honduran forests. The fabled lost city isn't the only thing they discovered though, and their expedition led them to find 22 new species of plants and animals, along with three species of animals that were believed to have been extinct. The La Mosquisha forest spans over 85,000 acres, and researchers still have a lot of work left to do. Jimmy Hoffa Jimmy Hoffa was one of the most powerful and influential leaders in the 1960s and 70s. His efforts as a labor leader led to many strikes and consolidations of working conditions and pay. Those in Detroit knew that they could depend on Jimmy to fight in their corner, but deep down, Jimmy had hit a few secrets. With great power comes great responsibility, and by 1967, he'd been convicted of bribery after finding himself involved with the government and the mafia. In 1971, Jimmy's sentence was commuted, and he was eager to return to his work as a labor leader. But shortly before he could jump back into action, he disappeared. Jimmy Hoffa was seen for the last time on July 30, 1975, at the Red Fox Restaurant in Bloomfield Township, Michigan. At the time, Jimmy was attending a meeting with Mafia leaders to discuss an ongoing issue with the Teamsters. After that meeting, Jimmy Hoffa was never seen alive again. There are numerous theories about Jimmy's disappearance, the most popular being that the Mafia took Jimmy out. There have been multiple confessions over the years from mobsters wishing to make things right before they leave this earth. Some people have stated that Jimmy's buried somewhere in Michigan, while others claim that he was put in a barrel. Until Jimmy's remains are found, his disappearance will remain a mystery. The Holy Grail The Holy Grail is a religious artifact that people have been searching for for centuries to no avail. The Holy Grail, a golden goblet, is said to be the cup that Jesus drank from during the Last Supper. This cup holds significance for those who observe Christianity, and its whereabouts have never been determined. Some theologists speculate that the Holy Grail doesn't exist and it's a fable. There have been a few efforts over the centuries to uncover the location of the Holy Grail. However, all of them have failed. In recent years, experts have claimed that the Infanta Donna Uraca goblet, made from gold and onyx, and encrusted with precious stones, is the Holy Grail. The goblet was named after the daughter of King Ferdinand I, but there's no solid evidence to prove that this really is the Holy Grail. Eloy County Jane Doe On June 29, 2010, officers in Eloy, Arizona, attempted to perform a routine traffic stop on a car being driven by an unknown male and a Hispanic woman, aged 18 to 25. 
Despite being signaled to pull over, the tube continued to drive, and officers watched as they drove the car into a nearby farm. Minutes later, officers found the vehicle abandoned on a dirt road close to a canal, but there was no sign of the mysterious female passenger. The unknown male driving the car would later tell investigators that they witnessed the woman jumping over the fence and into the canal and never saw them resurface. It wouldn't be until June 30th, 2010 that the Pinal County Sheriff's Office would receive a strange call alerting them to a body in the river. The body was identified as that of the mysterious female driver from the day before, but her body carried no identification. In their report, the coroner noted that the woman was 18 to 25 years old, Hispanic with black hair and brown eyes and 5 foot 4. She's become known as the Pima County Jane Doe. The DNA Doe Network is currently working on her case and hopes that DNA holds the answers to her identity. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Pinal County Sheriff's Office at 520-866-5111, quoting case number 10063001. Jacob Ryan Loomis 24-year-old Jacob Ryan Loomis was last seen on October 19th of 2019 in Montana. That afternoon, he called his family and told them that he was going hunting with his girlfriend and an unnamed male friend in Eureka or Libby, Montana. When Jacob failed to return to the homeless shelter that he lived in, he was reported missing to the police. The police department discovered that Jacob had left everything behind in his apartment. During questioning, Jacob's girlfriend and the unnamed male friend who were going hunting with him refused to answer any questions. Since his bizarre disappearance, they've been uncooperative with law enforcement. Jacob's case has since run cold, and his family is desperate for answers. Jacob Ryan Loomis is described as a white male with brown hair, brown eyes, 5 foot 8 and 120 pounds. Anyone with information is asked to contact Detective Ryan Bartholomew at 406-758-7780, quoting case number 2019-31154. Roland and Maram Hanel When 49-year-old Roland Hanel and 32-year-old Maram Hanel stopped attending their appointments and missed several visits with friends, those closest to them knew something was wrong. On September 20th, 1984, a friend went to the Hanels' home on Gendron Road in Jay, Vermont to check on them. As they stepped inside, they were met with a grisly scene. Roland was found in the living room, and Maram was in the kitchen, and it was clear they had both sustained significant injuries. Unfortunately, the police have never recovered the weapon, and there's been little movement in the case. The coroner estimated that the two were attacked between September 15th and September 19th. Friends of the Hanels would tell investigators that they last saw them on September 14th. The couple were regarded as warm and kind, and people struggled to find a reason why anyone would want to hurt them. Since 1984, the case has run cold, and investigators believe someone out there knows something. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Vermont State Police at 802-244-8781. Tammy Jean Daniel 24-year-old Tammy Jean Daniel was last seen by her parents in the early morning hours of June 2nd, 1987, at around 3 a.m. that morning. Tammy's parents had collected her from a local bar in Staniford, West Virginia and driven her home. As Tammy said goodbye to her parents and tried the door handle, she realized it was locked. Tammy's parents offered to wake Jean up by knocking on the windows or allowing her to stay at theirs, but Tammy declined both options. Instead, Tammy said that she would sleep in the tent in the front yard until Jean awoke in the morning. As Tammy's parents drove out of the lot, they heard a door slamming and assumed that she'd managed to rouse her husband from his slumber. That was the last time Tammy Jean Daniel was ever seen, and she was reported missing days later. Her husband Jean told the Raleigh County Sheriff's Office that he didn't know where his wife had gone and had no memory of her coming home that evening. Disturbingly, just days after Tammy disappeared, Jean borrowed a hoover from a neighbor, and when he returned it, it was covered with a vile stench and a sticky substance. In the 1980s, Jean was brought before the courts on several homicide charges, with only one sticking. 
Investigators have tried to convict Jean of taking Tammy's life, but the case was thrown out due to insufficient evidence. There have been renewed efforts in recent years to find out what happened to Tammy, but no evidence has been recovered. Tammy Jean Daniels is described as a white female with light brown hair, blue eyes, 5 foot 7 and 130 pounds. Anyone with information is asked to contact Detective Larry Lilly of the Raleigh County Sheriff's Department at 304-255-9300, quoting case number 876268. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.